What is up, guys? It is the sports nerd Bradley Walker, and welcome to the Walker Report, part of In the Zone Sports Radio and part of NGSC Sports. Guys, remember the website. It's NGSCSports.com for all your current sports content. I want to wish everyone out there who celebrates St. Patrick's Day, happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone that is out there. Uh, we are sponsored by CreatingZenSpaces.com, the local choice in St. Petersburg, Florida, for house cleaning, organization, decluttering, and pet sitting. It's about finding the peace within you and adding comfort to your life. And guys, remember, Zen Spaces begins with you. Be kind to yourself and one another. Guys, like I said, welcome in um, to a uh, St. Patrick's Day Thursday. We are uh, in the midst of the NFL. There's a let me go ahead and bring on both my co-hosts real quick. Uh, we could discuss this trade a little bit later. But what do you guys think about Devontae Adams going to the Raiders? That just broke. It's a few. Really? Minutes. When did that break? Traded uh, the Packers traded him to the to the Las Vegas Raiders. That just broke just a For few what? seconds. Uh, hang on, just a second, but let me look that up. I, it was just on NFL.com. I, I just put it on. Um, hey, Lou, you're muted, bud. Let's see. He gets, oh, there he goes. He got. He, he got. He signed a five-year, one hundred forty-five point two five million dollar deal. Uh, I wonder Aaron, Rod Aaron Rodgers regrets signing with the Packers, man. Am I good now? Yes. Yeah, Devontae, you're good now, bud. Devontae, okay. Yeah, Devontae Adams is leaving Green Bay to sign with the Raiders. Wow. So one wow. of Aaron Rodgers' main weapons is has left. Like the weapon. <laughs> okay. Left and gone to Vegas. So there you go. Whatever happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Yeah, I guess. Uh, well, I that's the whole thing. Green Green Bay. Well, that's the whole thing. If you guys didn't read, he didn't want to stay in Green Bay because he didn't want to right. run under the tag. So he decided that uh -huh. you know. So he went and got paid. I mean, I don't blame him. I mean, in all reality, no, no. I don't blame him for not wanting to go get paid. Um. Uh, so yeah, he. uh he obviously got paid. He went and got paid. So, and, uh, and, and, and we, like I said, we could discuss this later, but that's got to be the best yeah. of, in, in football right now. The AFC well, West. what about uh, Von Miller going to going to Buffalo? That that was another big one. That's another big one, yeah. too. Yep. I know it's supposed to be very happy about that. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah. Well, Bradley knows who, who it is, but Adam doesn't, actually. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know who well, it is, Bradley. Come on. The well, who 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 is it? My girlfriend. Ah, she's a Buffalo Bills fan. She's a Bills fan. I don't know why, but she is. <laughs> well, is she, is she from the city? Is she from what? Is she from the city? No, she actually isn't. But her former coworkers, uh, I think, were. I got you. So I rubbed off on her. <laughs> Yeah, you've heard me mention her on the show a couple of times, though. Uh, yeah, 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 we, yeah. We've talked about her before. So, yeah, same, same girl. <laughs> well, I mean, I will give her this credit. At least she's a football fan. So I'll give her that. You know, who, well, she gets most of that from that and from me, from her coworker and from myself. I taught her everything she knew. I mean, she. Uh, I'll give her that credit. I mean, at least she's a football fan. Well, that's <laughs> just the Bills. Right. One team is better than no teams. Let's kind of start somewhere, right? Yep. It could be worse. You, you know, it could be worse. You could be, uh, well, a Patriot fan or a Browns fan. Oh, 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 a Browns fan. Oh, 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 Baker, Baker wants out. Baker wants out. What else is no? <laughs> I don't like him anyway. We could discuss that later if you guys want. Yeah. To. I just wanted yeah, to much play. later. I wanted to ask you guys what what your thoughts were about the Devontae Adams trade because that just broke. We can get into more depth in that later because we weren't in the show on the NFL anyway. So. Well, I did. I mean, that just caught my attention, so I didn't get a chance to you know really read up on it. All right. Yeah, I mean, it literally just broke. So. Yeah, yeah. It just broke a few minutes ago. Um, I don't usually talk oh, to talk oh, most yeah, about yeah. wrestling, but I had to bring up the fact that um, a Hall of Famer passed away this week in Scott Hall. Scott um, Hall. At 63 years old, he had three heart attacks after hip surgery. Um, three heart attacks, yeah. It's That's three too uh, many, man. Yeah. Um, 
I think um, I think his biggest impact had to be the NWO. I think him. Oh yeah, Kevin Definitely. Nash and Hulk Hogan. Well, bad NWO to WCW. Uh, oops. We... Yeah. You know, uh, the bad guy. The bad guy. Was, what was what was the quote that he used that at his at his retirement uh, speech? Um, mm. Bad days come and go, but bad guys never. Never or something like that. Something like oh, yeah, that. Bad guys never die or something like that. Bad guys never die or something never like die. that. Yeah. yeah. They really did you know. get a haircut, Lou? About a week ago. Okay. Looks good. That's I know I'm due. I'm due for one. Not to get y'all yeah. sidetracked, but I gotta get my haircut too, so I'm right there with you. <laughs> I gotta get my I'm haircut. Too. But I took I took a shower before I started my uh dinner stream. So um I'll tell you about that. I'll, I'll tell you about that at the end of the show. Um only if you want to. Uh, well, you know, kind of do. Um, but yeah, um, you know, growing up, he was just a smidgen before I got into um, WWE um, and the NWO. And um, the Monday Night Wars were, were wrapping up mm -hmm. when I was getting into WWE. And this would have been 99, 2000. And it was still mm -hmm. very much um, TNA, you know, tits and ass. Right. And it, yes. it was very not kid friendly, you know, not little kid friendly. No. You know, when I was nine, ten. Um, but then people, again, I was supposed to be known as kid friendly anyway. No, it, no, it wasn't, and it certainly, it it certainly wasn't. No. Um, and. Um, but you know, as I got older and I got to understand what was what was what, you know, mm. I had a huge, you know, huge respect for um, Scott Hall. Yes. And um, this Hall and Nash and then um, Hogan. I mean, they changed the business. Yes. Absolutely. You know, factions had come and went, but there weren't, you know, the sustaining to sustain a faction. Uh, of superstars, like, you know, usually when you have a faction back in the day, you know, in the 80s and early 90s, you'd have one star and two and two lackeys. And mm -hmm. Hogan and, and Hall and... Um, I'm blanking, I just said his name. And now I'm totally Hogan. blanking on Hogan. Hogan, Hall, and the other one. Evan Nash. Evan and Nash. Nash. Okay. All being superstars in their own right. Yes. And their ability to be... Um, and to work so well together was a, was a testament to their ability in and out of the ring. Mm -hmm. Because so many so many factions had come and gone that didn't have that kind of star power. No. Or I think of the you know, or even even if they had the star power, because I think of the, the four horsemen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I okay. had to put that one. Up. NWO oh. for life. <laughs> and that's what I think that is when we were talking to him a couple weeks ago, weren't we? Yep. Mm -hmm. you know, was... Well, like I said, I mean, for, for him to come, I mean, I was watching a, a YouTube thing today about, like, the they talked a lot about a lot of the young guys coming up, he would take bumps and take losses yeah. to right. provide these guys a better career. Like the one, two, three kid who ended up becoming X Pac, you know, mm. that was one of the big wins Funny for him in over. his career. Uh, with Scott Hall, you know, beating Scott Hall. Of course, we all know him as Razor Ramon. That's Razor yeah, he came into yeah. as and um, but yeah, I mean, it you know, I one of my favorite clips is when. The NWO Hollywood was at war with NWO Wolfpack, mm -hmm. and they I think they were in South Carolina. And I, I watched this this YouTube clip the other day, and they just absolutely manhandle Hollywood. They go in and beat the hell out of whoever's in the locker room. Then Sting grabs Hogan's limo and turns it upside down with some crane thing out in front of the arena. Huh. Then you have Kevin Nash, Lex Luthor, and I can't remember the other guy's name. Um, Absolutely. There's another. There was another uh, another one that went with them, but they hopped in this Hummer limo mm -hmm. and drove around the bars in South Carolina. 
they found Scott Hall and beat the crap out of him. Yeah. But it was it's just interesting how those two factions faced off it against mm-hmm. each other. That they, they had split it up to where there was two factions. Right. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, I heard I had heard that he was on life support earlier in the week, and then yes. I said, okay, well maybe that's a good thing. I mean, sometimes most of the time when you um, are on life support and you come off, usually that's bad news. Usually it's yeah, pull the plug it's on bad. you and right. Uh, but they had said that he was surviving, he was okay, and then like hours later, it was he was gone. So yeah. Um, yeah. And of course, Diamond Dallas Page helped him get out of the you know hell that he was in with his alcoholism and drug use and yeah. Uh, DDP is a time. real good guy. I, yeah. I never heard a bad word about DDP. No. And I mean, he and the, if you remember him, he came in the WCW. I mean, later in life, he wasn't some young Ooh, kid. Right. He no, came in right. at like, what in his late in his mid thirties, late thirties. That sounds right. No. Yeah, he he wasn't uh, he wasn't a spring chicken when he came into the WCW. No. 30, uh, 30, I mean, something. the number that jumps out to me is thirty five. That and that could be, but well, I mean, that could, wrestling. That could absolutely be right. I know well, he came know, in, in in life. You were talking you were talking about Scott Hall taking bumps for people and and putting people over. Mm-hmm. And you know, it's we have, you know, we know. Then it's work. We know it's not real. It's scripted. It's 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 fiction. But one of the hardest things to do as a as a competitor is to put your ego aside, and, and especially in a scripted business, where That's winners true. and losers are predetermined, and be and be willing to take a loss, and let somebody else go over. And that it, it's so. As a top guy, it's so easy to be. To tell a young, you know, I know you mentioned Xbox, the one, two, three kid. It's mm-hmm. so easy to tell a kid, I'm not taking that ball. I'm not going over. I'm not, you're not going to get over on me. And to have the, be able to set your ego aside and say, it's what's good for the business. It's what's good for the brand. And it'll help build better matches in the future is a testament to Scott Hall and who he was as a person. Right. Yeah, because I I um I watched an hour and thirty minute interview today from Pat McAfee on Vince McMahon. I watched that whole interview oh. today. McMahon yes, was actually yeah. in studio. He came in studio too. This wasn't like over like us talking. This is he was live in studio. Um Yeah, because Pat just signed a on on positive. If we can talk about something positive for a, go ahead, yeah, for a go ahead, yeah. Yeah, sure. Uh, McAfee actually signed a contract for SmackDown a couple days ago. Uh-huh. Well, he got he got awarded a match at WrestleMania. Vince McMahon yeah. gave it to him during the interview, so that was cool. So he'll have a yeah, match it's at great. WrestleMania. It's great. He's putting, you know, you see a lot of celebrity guys, and I, I know that's what hurt WW, uh, WCW was all the celebrities that got contracts and and yeah. made a made a mockery of, of WCW. But Pat McAfee has put in the work. To actually earn the contract, and he's well deserving of a shot of a shot as a wrestler. He's a great personality. I I think Pat McAfee is hilarious. He's funny. He's intelligent. Uh, he's entertaining. Him and AJ Hawk, when they get going, look out. It's, no, it's I, so much well, not so much. And him too. The 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 guys that he has in studio with him too. The three oh, guys yeah. do are um, they. they that's just like the whole kit and caboodle. Like they yeah. all five of them right. make that show so great. Well, he, you know, I think I, I I always love the Dan Patrick show and the Danettes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's taking a cues from, from Dan Patrick. I think Dan Patrick was one of the best sports guys around. I I always liked I always always respected Dan Patrick. Me too. Um, and you know, I kind of I, I try to um emulate Dan Patrick and his style. That's 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 kind of the, the uh, my idea. Other than I talk too much, I feel like I dominate every conversation we have. Yeah. All good. All good. Yeah, look, some people don't ever shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I feel I well, I go back and listen to the show pretty much on a you know, getting ready for the show on, on Thursday. I'll you know, on yeah. Monday I'll re listen to the show. 
and then on Tuesday and then on Thursday morning, I'll re-listen to the show again, getting yeah. ready for the next show. And I feel like I just dominate every conversation. Like I just talk no. so intensely. Nah, nah, not at all. <laughs> well, not, I, neither, mean, neither, I mean, I mean that. So, you know, if if you guys are happy with what I'm doing, I'm more than happy to talk because I do love the sound of my own voice. I don't like the sound of my own voice at all. I really don't. <laughs> But then again, I think most I think most uh, sportscasters and people in our business uh, don't. It Not. took me, you know, I gotta uh, I freely admit before before we move on to something else, is that when I when I first started this show, I couldn't listen to myself talk. I yeah. absolutely hated the sound of my own voice. What helps me is pretending like it's somebody else. Right. Like I put my earbud in, and I'll turn the show on, and I'll just pretend like it's not me. I'm just listening to some three random dudes that I, you know, I like listening to. Yeah. And right. I will make myself laugh and I will make myself think. And I'll be like, will you just shut up and get to the point already? <laughs> um, like I haven't heard that one before. <laughs> when I, when I'm listening, oh, hello. hello. Uh, like when I'm re-listening to the show, I'm like, like spit it out <laughs> so many times. Just like that. Say what you're thinking. Yeah. So NASCAR, what I, I read today, is heading to Atlanta. Am I right? Oh, I, next I wish I could go. I wish I could go this weekend, but I don't think I'm going to have the money. I don't think I'm going to have the money for well, it. How, how, far, how far but are you two away? Two hours. Like, oh, that's not I'm, bad. I've been driving. I could get oh. – it, it's like I did Talladega a couple years ago now. I got up Sunday morning. I bought my ticket Friday. I got up Sunday morning. I drove there. I drove back Sunday night. It was great. How long was the ride? About two and a half hours. Well, that can be done a day. Sure. Yeah. And uh, from here to Talladega, it's about two and a half hours. From here to Atlanta, it's about two and a half hours. It's about the same. It's actually, I live in Tennessee, right? Yes. I am further away from Bristol, which is in Tennessee, than I'm either Talladega or Atlanta. Right. Figure that one out, right? I was going to say Bristol, Connecticut, but okay. Right, no. Bristol, Connecticut is <laughs> good. Bristol, Connecticut is more closer to where I am. Right, right. You can do that in two hours. <laughs> Not in the car. Yeah, actually, you could. I wouldn't recommend it, but you could. From maybe, maybe from where you live. Yes. <laughs> that's what yeah, that, that, that drive from Tennessee to Bristol, Connecticut, maybe, that's a lot. That's a long, that's a haul. That's, that's, yeah. that's, 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 that's a bit of a drive. Yeah. Mm. Because two and a half hours, but that's where Gainesville is from me. So that's how long it right. took me to get to Gainesville, where the Gators play. So it's not that's not that far of a drive. Just well, driving no, back, I, the pain in the ass. So that was the bad part about it. Yeah, well, but I, I, I was, uh, I use Google. I use Google Maps, so it took me back roads. So once I got out of the main, once I got off the main strip, it was a breeze getting back home, and it just took about three, you know, it's about three hours to drive from Talladega back home. Mm -hmm. uh, I took uh, uh, well. I left it. I left the house at like six a.m. So by the time it was, it was only it was only eight o'clock. I left the house at six o'clock Eastern. I got to Talladega at eight o'clock East, uh, eight o'clock Central. So it took about it took roughly three hours to get there. But I don't drive crazy fast, and I take my time, and I gave myself plenty of time. And so I sat in the parking lot and drank beer until it was time to go in. And I was like, hell yeah. Hey, at least you did. It looks like, Bud, that they're they're talking about the tire issue still plaguing NASCAR and um, how they recently repaved they recently repaved Atlanta Motor Speedway. If yeah, like last fall. It's gonna be great. That's why I wanna go, is because it's a I really wanna go see the repave. I really wanna go see them in the first that first um the first race at the repave, and I don't think I'm gonna have the money for it, and especially not with gas being four dollars a gallon now. Right, right. Also, but they're calling for 100 percent chance of rain on Sunday too in Atlanta. So okay, that will ruin it right there. Uh, yeah, definitely don't want to spend the money on a. On I was gonna say, home. you drive all the way there and it rains out, and you got to drive yeah. all the way back home. Yeah, and then was, and then or stay the night in Atlanta. Yeah. Right. And go to the race on Monday. Right, because um, I think we're going to make it up. Right. And then if I get lucky, 
Because I could get unlucky and they it could still be raining on Monday. And knowing my mm. luck, is it rain Monday and Tuesday, and they'd move the race to Wednesday, and I would have to go home at that point. Right. Because I could take off of work Monday and Tuesday. I can I just call out and just not show up and be all right. Um, but then, but my luck is it rained Monday, it rained Sunday, it rained Monday, and it rained Tuesday, and I wouldn't be able to take the. The rains and pours, folks. It rains and pours. Right. Yep. So um, yeah. Well, that's the risk you take when you're doing this, you know. And did did I also read but too that Corey LaJoy is um suspended? Um, I have not heard that. Let me look that up real quick. It says over the weekend, NASCAR driver Corey LaJoy found himself without a wheel after running into the wall during oh, the um, motor speedway. NASCAR so, announced yeah. four space suspension. Oh, I'm sorry for his crew chief. My fault. I didn't read yeah. the article. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, that's okay. That's okay. Uh, no, yeah, his crew chief was suspended for the next four races for a lug nut not being tightened down properly. Yeah. Um, I think that's a bit excessive, but that's just me. I mean, is that is that the new thing, but now with the new tires that they're only with the single uh, with the single lug center lug center lug yeah. and single lug? Yeah, it's uh, um because they don't want you messing with the tires because it's a safety issue. Right. So they're handing out heavy punishments, stiff stiff punishments. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they've already had three or four crew chiefs that have been suspended so far this year. I see. Um, the racing has been pretty good. Um, there was uh, another thing real quick, but I wanted to, these are the best 15 NASCAR cup series, 2012 paint schemes so okay. far. Ranked. So let me give you what they are and you can tell me whether you agree or disagree with them. Um, the first one is number 15 and that is JT Daughtry racing number 47, Sunny D. That was in Las okay. Vegas. Oh, okay. Actually, I mean, here, let me, let me, actually, let's just can do you this. Pull them up? Yeah, I was going to say, let me share the screen with you guys so you guys can see, sure, the, sure. Uh, see the screen. Then that way you guys can see what I'm talking about. So there is the first Probably. one. Can you even make that bigger or can you? But there's the no. first one right there. Perfect. Okay. That's okay. It doesn't, not one, I mean, yeah. A fifteen is fine for it. I mean, who who doesn't like why, who doesn't like Sunny D? I love Sunny D. That was so much. I, I haven't had Sunny D in years, but when I, had, when I was a kid, that was my. Like if I if I could have Sunny D or you know orange, you know like real orange juice or Sunny D when I was twelve, Sunny D every day. <laughs> love me some Sunny D. Um, the next one is Hendrick Motorsports, the uh, mm. Ally Bank. At Fontana was the yeah, next. Yeah, that one's okay. That right. one right it's there. okay. I don't hate it. I don't love it. There, yeah. there are a lot of schemes that I like better than it. I'll be honest with you that that's the bank I pay my car loan to. Is Ally? Bank. Uh-huh. I, have, I have an Ally Savings account, so that's the bank I pay my car payment to. Um, the next one is um, 23X I Racing McDonald's with the Daytona 500. Hmm. Uh, that's 2311. I'm sorry, yeah, 2311. My apologies. Oh, that's okay. I'm just throwing that out there. Yeah. Who, who's who's that ride belong to? Right there. Uh, oh, that's Bubba Wallace's ride. Oh, mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. And that's he's minority owned by Michael Jordan, right? And Michael Jordan and Denny Hamlin. Okay. And Denny Okay. okay. That's for the 2311. The next one is Stuart Haas Racing. That that looks pretty cool. For Subway, I'll give yeah, some props right. for that one. That looks pretty cool for – I haven't ate a Subway sandwich in years, but – I, I mean, eat Subway all the time. That's, it's my go-to sub restaurant. Yeah. I got one literally right down the road. So if, I get, if I'm coming home and I want a sub, I'll go to Subway. The next one is Team Hesberg's number 27, Woody's Wash Shack at the Daytona 500. That's a car wash. It's a car Shock wash. Yeah, that's a car wash. I've actually seen one of those here. There's one in here in, where I live in Pinellas Park. There's one down the road from me. Is that uh, That's interesting. That looks like the old uh, Jeff Gordon run. Yeah. 
Yeah, or they- it's, it's it's mimicking the uh, the original. Um, it's an homage because Exalta used to. So so what ha- See what happened was is that Exalta bought Dupont. Oh, and, okay. okay. And when when they when the merger went through, Exalta, uh, they, Dupont became Exalta. So Dupont still exists. It's just Exalta. Mm-hmm. Exalta. I actually kind of like that. I wish that they leave that more often that way too. Going, oh my god, to the to the Dupont car back in um, the day. The number ten's pretty good for it. Uh the next one is the Joe Gibbs mm. racing ethyl and chocolate scheme. Interesting. And that's a rather mm-hmm. unfortunate picture they use there. Yes. Yeah. I'm back at that the was tow truck. That was, was that? That was Las Vegas, wasn't it? Yeah, it was it Vegas? Yeah. Correct. Yep. Yeah, he had backed it into the wall. He got he got loose in three and four and backed it into the wall. And they used his mug shot, man. Good <laughs> Lord. Uh, the Hendrick Vavoline scheme. That's the old. Yeah, that's the old. I like that one. I like that one. I the I was not sold on moving and sliding the numbers forward. I don't. I'm I'm not sure how from you know. Obviously, you guys aren't NASCAR guys, but. This is my thing. So they move the uh, the numbers forward on the they're they're under the A instead of being un, under the middle of the door, they're under the A pillar now. And um, there were when the season was uh, in the off season, they were doing some scheme mockups. Some of the, they they wanted this corner the quarter panel scheme or the quarter panel corner quarter panel space um, in mm-hmm. front of the rear wheel and under the door. They wanted that available for um, advertising. Uh, so you know you could see it as it was going around the track, and um, um, some schemes didn't utilize that very well. I think that Valvoline nailed it. I really think yeah. that the uh, using that that quarter panel space behind the, the in front of the rear wheel, I absolutely absolutely love it about this scheme. I kind of like because it, it kind of looks like the old Valvoline car that used they used to run too. So. Yeah, like it's more, more like red. Yeah, yep. All right. Next one is the Roush Fenway Kazowski Racing Violent, Violent, God, if I could read, Violent <laughs> Defense, right. excuse me, Violent Defense, Violet Defense. That's different. I, I don't, you don't see too many purple themed cars in NASCAR. Ron Wells out of the game. Ron yeah. Wells used to run a purple car all the time. I'm just a Crown Royal Purple car, man. That's a good car. Good scheme. And there's the Dex Imaging Wood Brothers Racing. Event. Again, another another scheme that's really utilizing the um the the new quarter panel um availability. It 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 does look it does look different when the numbers are pushed forward than it did in the right. past. Where it was in the middle of the car. Now it's pushed to the quarter panel of the car. Yeah, it does look interesting how they've done that. Making it more more prone for sponsorships to be in mm-hmm. this area right here. Yeah. And the Dex image. And- Ooh, that looks cool. Stillman College. I like that. I like that. Okay. New York yes. Racing, Stillman College, Atlanta Motor Speedway. Right. That's, um, That's going to be this weekend right here. Yeah. 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 Mayweather's team. I like that. I like that concept. That's, that's oh, cool. Wow. That's a cool concept. Um, this is Rick Ware racing the newer mm. tech ODT from Vegas. See, I wouldn't have put that on the list, but that's just me. Okay. All right. Um, number five for sure. And now I saw one of these when I was in Nashville. Yeah. All over Nashville. Tootsies. I saw these all over Nashville well, when I was rock there. From. Kid Rock's Bar. Yep. Uh, track House Racing. Yeah. I, yeah. I I saw this. I want to say, I think we have one. Oh, man. Oh, locally but i think that was i know i saw that in nashville i know i saw at least i think they're headquartered out of nashville yeah um number two is the get bienthal i'm I'm hoping i'm pronouncing that correctly i don't know if i'm pronouncing that bioethanol bioethanol yeah that's how i would pronounce it yeah i agree that's okay that kind of pays homage a little bit to Dale Senior's car, than it's yeah. green. Then it's green instead of being black and red and silver. Yeah. It's got right. the green. The, the three is okay. what makes 
makes yeah, it yeah. cool is the is the three. And number one is the Powerhead Berman scheme by Trackhouse Racing. Really yeah. can't really see that very yeah, well. Yeah, that's a really great picture of it. They could have got a little bit, but it looks like it's uh yeah, like it like I don't know what a Howler head is. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I'm not sure. But I wanted to I wanted to show you guys those things that mm. those the website is called uh jayapnick.com. So they are the ones Job. who put out yeah, who put out that um right. who put out the schemes. Okay. Um still early I have, in the year. I have one I have one quick tennis thing okay. that I wanted to touch on that basically has to do with what's going on right now in Ukraine. Of course. Okay. Um, and that has to do with Daniel Mev- Mev- Medvedev. 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 Um, he, I guess, at the present moment is banned from Wimbledon unless he denounces Putin. Um, that's what I've now again. I don't know how you guys feel about that. If that should happen, not happen. I mean, I, I don't, I, I, I feel I, for him because, yeah, I mean, I don't know how you can blame somebody from Russia. They don't, I mean, not everyone there believes in what Putin is doing. Obviously, we all. Right. Um, it's just it's just an unfortunate situation because yeah. if, if he condemns Putin, he could end up with a bounty on his head in Russia. Correct. And he can never go home. Yeah, he'd have to. But live if he out. doesn't condemn Putin, yeah. he'd have to live outside of Russia for the rest of his life. Right. And, or and that's or not Russia fair Putin. either. That's not fair either. To be in all right. Or who? You know that's you know that's that <laughs> that isn't fair. <laughs> to be, you know, moved out Everybody of your home. Catch 22. Yeah. So either you give it up and play in Wimbledon, or you don't, and you are out this year. So it's yeah. And you know, how many more Wimbledons does he have left in it? I don't know. That's a very, very good question. Very, very good question. I'm not. I'm not. I'm really surprised that not all Russian players, no matter male or female, aren't banned right now as of. From Wimbledon, Which, you know, it's so yeah. unfair. It's so unfair yeah. to the Russians. They're just regular. You know, we talked about this what, like, two weeks ago now. Yeah, um, it's so unfair to all the Russians who didn't have anything to do with it. Don't get me wrong. I understand that there were, you know, I understand that some of these guys benefited benefited from Putin's regime. I get that, and I'm not saying that. They're, 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 that everyone is, is unculpable. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. not everyone is culpable, is what. And so many of these guys just want to go play sports. Yep. And, yes. You know, it's kind of frustrating as an American when it's shut up and dribble. And I, 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 I believe in that. You know, I, I, I support that, that idea of just shut up and dribble. And, you know, the idea of, of sports and politics being separate entities. Mm-hmm. You know, if I want to watch, if I need any, if I want to know the news or, or, or politics, uh, there are avenues for that that I can seek out. Yes. And, again, yeah. and, and sports is supposed to be just sports. Escape. And, and it's frustrating. And I, and I feel for athletes who are now forced to take sides in, in political issues, especially on the world's – where you know, and especially in countries like Russia, where you if you say the wrong thing, you can end up in the bad in in, in bad places, or you know, completely you know, exiled from from your from your homeland and your friends and family, and never you don't get to see them at home anymore. You right. can't be seen right. them. <sighs> damned if that's you do, damned if you don't. Yeah, I mean that's the only thing that I had. I mean Wimbledon's coming up. So I just wanted to bring that up that I saw that, that banned until um, he, you know, basically denounces that he doesn't believe in what, you know, Putin's doing. But like you said, if he does denounce that, then what is what's his life's in jeopardy in Russia? You know, mm-hmm. then you go home 
I'll be like, oh, so you don't like the way our leader is. Okay, well, then we'll kill you too. We'll make sure right. that you don't, that you can't live here at home or we'll kill your family or whatever. We'll make people disappear, you know? Yeah. So, I mean, that's yeah. that's a scary thing right there. <laughs> scary. That's the scary. Um, yes. Let me do one little quick college football thing, and Adam will, will be happy when he hears what I have. Um, this is about the University of Michigan, actually. I saw that. Um, hiring a the first um, female. What what is she? Uh, assistant coach. What is she? Just some uh, something to do with the, so Yeah, harder to do on the coaching staff. Yes. Graduate assistant coach for a quarterback. Right, right. He's the quarterback's assistant coach. Um, Milan Bolden Morris is her name. And this is what this young lady looks like. So I'm going to share this page real quick. Hang on just a second. Let me bring that up here. This is what the young lady who now is, I think she's the first graduate. Uh, that's her right there. That's the, she's oh, the newest. Yes. The um, female uh, Power Five. Power Five Conference, correct. Yep. Power she's, five conference. So, yeah, I wanted. I, I I saw that. I'm like, yep, that'll make Adam happy. That it's it's the it's the Wolverines that are mm -hmm. the first to do it. Uh, so that's cool. I mean, I thought that was cool that to bring that up. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, that was that. If you get the job done. More power to her. Absolutely. Excellent. And then you know what? How how I look at it is, I don't care who what color a person is or what their sexual orientation is. If they no. can do a good mm -hmm. job, then they deserve to, they deserve the opportunity. That's what counts. And that you thing. get the job done, that's all I care about. Me too. That, that's it. Yep. They can do their job. And you know what? She might go in there and be a graduate coach. And next thing you know, within 10 years, from yeah. now, that will be, she'll be a head coach in college football somewhere. Right. Just think. I mean, that's I where it all starts. Yep. You know, that's or where it all starts. Yep. This is what it is, but you know, as long as she got the job on merit and she can do a good job, who cares? Yep, correct. And they don't ask you how, just how many. Yep. All right, let me go ahead, guys. Uh, I'm gonna do some golf news. Uh, they're they're playing the Valspar Championship, which is in Port yeah. Harbor. I live about 25 minutes from that golf course. Uh, not that far away. Mm -hmm. Um. So that, that first round was today, but the, the big story, two big stories that I wanted to talk about. First, there is a new Saudi backed golf tour overseas that will offer $225 million purse money over eight events. Four of those wow. will be in the United States. Wow. So four of those will be in the United States. The other four will be overseas in Saudi Arabia. But, um, I wanted to bring that up because Greg Norman, who obviously, if you know, hmm. golf, you know who Greg Norman is. I mean, we all know the shark. Um, but yeah, um, he is one of the guys that's pushing for that tour to do so well. Um, that's the one that, that Bill that got, got in trouble for, <laughs> for making comments about it. Right. But that's I mean, good. I'm just a curious, curious question because I'm not really sure offhand. How many players? Make a event each week. Uh, in those eight events, how many was it? Sixty-four. Uh, I think it's sixty-four, and and whoever, yeah, sixty-four who makes the cut. I know, and I think majors are less because there's less people that make the cut in major championships. Right. So with those, those wouldn't be considered majors, would they? No. 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 There's only there's only four majors on the PGA Tour: the Masters. The PGA Championship is number two. The U.S. Open is the third one. And then the last one is the British Open or Open Championship, however you want to call it. It's called both. Oh, wow. and, the two are, and the those two are, And two minor ones. The two minor ones are the players, which they just played last week in Ponte Verde or, you know, at TPC at Sawgrass. And what's the other one, Lewis, that you said? The Memorial. The Memorial. That's the one that Jack hosts, right? Yeah. That's Jack's tournament? Yeah. yeah. That's the one they call the fifth major. Yeah, so those are the two that, other than the, the top four, yeah, those are the two that right, they right. all – and, again, they all, they all at the end of the year play for 
the, the FedEx, FedEx, cup. FedEx Cup, the FedEx Cup, which is a ten million dollar purse for the guy who has the most FedEx points at the end of the season. Yeah, uh, not a bad day at the office. No, no, no. no. You'll lose so bad. Yeah. I was just, I was just curious because I was just running the numbers. So, yeah. on average, you're gonna walk away with four hundred eighty-eight thousand dollars. Yep. Even I the last. Split, obviously, yep. it's not gonna be split equally sixty-four ways. But uh, no. But to divide it sixty, you're, you're looking. You're looking at if you win, probably two million, three million dollars. I'll take yep. it. It's not a bad day at the office, you ask uh, me, man. I can go play that. I can well, play. I want to say, I want to say, bud, that the majors, I think the, I think the Masters and the U.S. Open are like twenty million to the winner. I mean, you, yes. it's a severe yeah. payday if you can win one of those. I think the Masters. Well, if I could break, if I could break eighty on nine. <laughs> if, if, yeah, that's a good word yeah. right there. If and right. breaking eighty for nine holes, yeah, he, he, yeah, that would be that's rough. That's I pay to see that. I, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to come to Tennessee and play golf with him next time I'm in Tennessee. Oh, yeah, hell yeah. yeah. I'll, play, I'll, play I'll, come down, I'll go down. I'll come down to Tampa. We'll play around. Yeah. Well, the Daytona yeah, trip. Yeah, Daytona. Yeah, Daytona. Daytona's yeah. Got golf courses in Daytona. Yeah, we need to put that together. Say in August. They want to get me out there. there. <laughs> go to Daytona for a, a weekend. Well, here's the big thing, guys. That isn't even the biggest news. The big news is. Tiger Woods is eyeing the 2023 Masters as his return. Now, that would be huge. Let me just oh, tell you how huge yeah. that would be if he comes back at a tournament that he's won, what, five times? I think he's won yeah. it five times. Right. Five, he's got four, five, five green times. jackets. So, yeah. I, I, I told you. That would be yeah, I remember. excellent. <laughs> I remember when he won his last one. I cried. And your, your uncle got you into golf. My cried. grandpa. I cried when my grandpa got me into golf. <laughs> my dad's not a golf. So my dad's not a golf fan at all. Doesn't like yeah. golf. Played golf once with my grandpa, and hated it. He, you know, he was he made you know that that, that old joke of, yeah. a game a round of golf is a good walk ruin. Um, and um, he was like he he texted me we were messaging because I live down here, and he lives back in Michigan, and we were talking, and he's like, are you watching this? I'm like, yeah, of course I'm watching this. It's Tiger, man, and he's got a shot, and and we were we were talking we were talking about it, and I was like, yeah, I was like tearing up watching him win it, and then then his kids, you know, getting you know, the first time his kids get to experience him winning a game, winning a match, winning a round, or what are you major? Winning, winning a tournament, that's the word I was looking for, winning a tournament. Winning and not just winning a tournament, but winning a major tournament. Well, winning yeah, I was, the most premier major of all of the four of them. Right. You know, in his first tour win in like five or six years. Well, what I I, I trust me. I when he when he made that putt on eighteen, right? And they showed they showed him hugging Charlie, and then they went back and showed him when he first won in ninety seven, hugging his yeah. dad. It's yeah. like holy shit! Like if you didn't cry at that moment. You got, you got no, no soul, man. Because, like, if that didn't that was, bring back just utter memories of how dominant he once was, right? That was the start of it from that point on in '97 when he, yeah, had that big win at Augusta and then blew up, just took the tour by fire. It was on fire. Is it '93? He was on. Oh, wait. It had to have been earlier than that. Well, I think. 199 I think he won the 1995 or 96 US amateur. I know one of those. When is he on Letterman? Is that 80? He was yeah, he was a young kid. He was a little boy. He was a little 88, boy. 89? Something like I that. Yeah, he was a boy. yeah. And he was born in 83, right? I remember this was he born the same year? Same year as me? Are you sure? He's older than me, bud. Hang on a minute. Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. He's, he's, in his, he's in his 40s. Let me see what year he was born. Tiger was born in 1975. Okay. The day, before, the day before New Year's Eve. He was December 30th, 1975. So he'll be 47 this year uh, in December. So he must have been, it must have been 83 that he was on Letterman. Yeah, must have been. Yep. 
he was little. Oh, I remember that. I remember them showing. Well, you and you remember too when he went to Stanford after he got he, he was you know he couldn't. I remember watching something about him that he could he had to hide like bubble gum wrappers and he couldn't wear Nike shoes because he wasn't sponsored by them and they were all looking to you know sponsor him and all that stuff. So yeah. He went through a world of it when he was, you know, coming up. Uh, right. Let me go. Yeah, let me give you. Game, though. Well, yeah. Hell yes, he changed the game. He he changed it for a lot of people. People, I think some people that would never would have played, never would have played the game of golf to begin with, but right. because of him, they did it. You know what I mean? They they and did. People that wouldn't have cared about golf. Right. Right. Let me um let me pull this article guys up real quick. This is Golf Week um cheap golf balls of 2022. So let me share mm. this with you and I'll give you my tidbit on these golf balls because I've probably most likely have played with them down the road. This ball right here I definitely have played with. The E6 ball by Bridgestone. If you can mm. read they're only $24 a dozen. That's very affordable for a golf ball. Mm-hmm. Being that Pro V's are fifty-five to sixty dollars a dozen, just letting you guys know how expensive golf balls. That was before the whole inflation and all that stuff happened. So, right. This ball right here, the Super Soft ball, it's another good ball. That's Callaway's ball, and you read there, there it's only eighteen to twenty-five. They're not bad balls at all. Uh, that's not a bad golf ball either. I've never played with this one before. So I can't give you a can't give you a I Max Fly is a good golf ball. Yeah. I like I, it's been a long time since I played a Max Fly, so I can't really specify how good that ball is because I've never really got a chance. They're twenty dollars a dozen. Um that's not bad. That's not unreasonable. It's not unreasonable. No. Pinnacle is a pretty good ball. Pinnacle is a pretty good ball. They're starting to come back up. They were I know at I'm one time. They were a rough patch with, with golf balls. They've come back a little bit the last few years. So well, and these these are it says twenty per fifteen. So you get really three reasonable extra balls in the dozen. That's really reasonable. That's really reasonable. So there you go with that one. Um, tricks on I to me honestly, if you're gonna play a cheap ball, this is the this is the brand that I would go that I would prefer. Anybody that I like you, tricks on. Go ahead. I I think they're a good ball. I really do. I think they're a great golf ball mm-hmm. to be. They're cheap. They they perform as well as the expensive balls do. So that's my opinion on tricks on. Yeah. Um. Now here's one of the titleist balls right here. I haven't played this one, so I can't tell you what I. But again. Twenty-five dollars dozen for Titleist. You can't beat one. that either. <laughs> you can't, no, you can't. can't. You really can't get. You can't really yeah. get. You really can't get much better than that. Uh uh-uh. uh I haven't played this ball either. The Wilson Staff Dual Soft Plus. Yeah, I've never played that that particular ball, but I played a lot mm-hmm. of Wilson. Wilson, okay. Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna write an article. Okay, that looks like that was the one. I'm going to write an article about those uh, for NGSC. That's going to be my article this week. I'm going to dive more into context and how I feel about those. Maybe I'll rank them by how I would use them. <laughs> right. If I would use, well, them or I would use them. Feel free to use me in your article and then tag me in it. But um, I could do that. My favorite ball to play, I just go to the pro shop and buy a, 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 a Sam. A, a gallon size bag of balls for like mm-hmm. what fifteen dollars. You get like forty balls for fifteen dollars. If you're an economy player and you're just somebody out there to hit balls and have fun, and you're not a professional, I think the the biggest bang for your buck is to go and buy a bag of of cl- reclaimed balls. Absolutely, yeah, the biggest bag you can play in your price range. Because then you get you get some Nikes, you get some Callaways, you get some Titleists, you get some Sack uh, Strixen. You get a couple of random practice balls. You get some balls from China that you've never heard of. You get a good mix of different things that are fun to try, and then you you, you kind of find two or three balls you really like, 
and then you lose lose those two balls. You lose two of them in the woods, and one of them in the pond, and then you you know you 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 go in the clubhouse and you drink a beer. It's it's a good time. No, I mean I, I I I I me that I you know I've been playing the game for over thirty years now, and I can tell you right. Um, my best bet if you're gonna get into the game. Do not go out and buy a thousand dollars at a golf club because you're not gonna. Yes, you can watch them on TV. Thousand dollars. It, it, it's not. It won't work for you. Go on Amazon. They have sets for 150 bucks. Buy it. Buy one of those sets to start off with to see if you like the game. If you mm-hmm. don't, you can sell them to somebody for a beat up set, right. something that they can give to their kids or whatever. Same How? thing with golf balls. Don't go and buy Titleist Pro V ones. At sixty dollars a dozen, then you know you're going to lose all of them, and then there you're out sixty right. bucks. Where like you, like Adam just said, just go buy a, a bag of balls that have been found by a, a diver or whoever, and mm-hmm. spend fifteen bucks. And if you lose them, hey, I'm only out fifteen bucks. Bam, you go in the, you go in the bar and have a beer and, and drink and have a good time. I mean, that's basically mm-hmm. what the game is supposed to be about: is having fun at the end of the day. But there are some people that take it too damn seriously. I'm not one well, of those. Gonna- I have fun. That's my my way of on the well, golf. And, uh, I'd love to play around. You're right-handed, aren't you, Brad? I am right-handed. Yes. So I'd have to run a set of clubs. And that's what oh. I would recommend. If you're if you're a, if you're wanting to get into the game and you don't know what's going on, you've never played before. Run a set of clubs. Go to your go to the pro shop. Tell them what you need. You know, left hand, right hand. It doesn't gotta be anything. You know, you're you're gonna get used clubs. They're gonna be crappy. Mm-hmm. But if you're if you're if you're a halfway decent player. And if you're just going out there, like, you know, let's say you're you're thirty something, you just, you know, like my friends play golf. I would love to. I'd like to learn. Go and rent a set of clubs and buy a the biggest, cheapest bag of balls you can find. Yep. And just go out there and have fun. Drink a beer, smoke a cigar. I love smoking a cigar on the golf course. Mm-hmm. I think it's a blast. I don't know. Do they, still let you smoke? do they still let you smoke in Florida? They do. Yes, they do. Because sure. in, in Michigan, you could smoke. You couldn't smoke in the clubhouse, but once you got out on the course, you could You're cotton right. light. And you were you were fine as long as you didn't. As long as you weren't being rude, right. nobody said. You know, and I'm I'm a very conscientious smoker. Like I don't blow it if, if somebody comes by and they're like, "Hey, we," you know, you need to be respectful. Um, but yeah, and and if you you know if it's something that your buddies do and you're wanting to try it. Don't go out. Don't even go and spend one hundred and fifty dollars on 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 a, a full kit and and balls, cleats, no, clubs, no. keys, shoes. Go to the pro shop when you get to the golf course. Ask to run a set of clubs. They're usually about twenty dollars. I yep. when, when I played about five five years ago, I could rent a set of clubs for like twenty bucks. I don't know if that's what when you said that's about what what you what Florida yeah, would be. I, I, I I worked at a golf course for ten years. I think we charged fifteen bucks. I think for our rental sets, and again, they weren't the greatest in the world. But no, no, you're not going to get them in, in in a pinch. Because if you travel, a, not everyone brings their sticks with them. I mean, right. that's in, in a in a in a hey, I want to try this thing because my friends are having fun. Yeah, all my friends play golf, or or this this business trip I'm going on, and I'm playing golf. Rent a set of clubs. You can spend twenty bucks. Buy a set of ball, you know, buy a big bag of random balls. Because if you lose them, you're gonna spend twenty bucks on forty balls. If you lose them, who cares? Buy a five dollar bag of tees, you know, you got what forty five, fifty bucks invested in it. If you have a great time and you feel like you could you could do something with it, then cool. And you go and then you go and you invest in better equipment and you actually put some work in, and maybe you you know maybe you have some fun and you win some local tournaments and you make two hundred bucks a year off of it, bitching. Mm-hmm. And if you know, you hate it, hey, worst thing you the, the worst thing you got was you got to walk in. So, you know the the worst yep. thing yeah the, the worst yeah. thing that happens you had to walk. So well, what, as I, as, I, as, I, as Mark Twain quoted it, a golf a golf is a good walk spoiled. That's 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 what it was. Yeah, right. The golf. Um, um, yeah. I mean, the the funny thing is, like I said, everybody that you know. My first set of clubs was my uncle's son's clubs. So I didn't have mm. a brand new set until I was in my teenage years. So mm. I'm just letting you know that you don't have to start off with the highest priced equipment. Now, no. obviously, if you're into the game at a young age, 
and you think, hey, what the hell? I'm going to do this for a living. Shit, then go ahead and pay that. Your parents buy you stuff. Go right, right ahead. No one's going to stop you. I mean, when I first started playing golf, um, you know, amateur golfers were still allowed to wear metal spikes. I have I had metal spike shoes. And they grind on the concrete, make a weird-ass grinding sound. But after a while, sure. they banned them, and you had to wear soft spikes, what they call spikeless shoes. I have both. I have right. a pair of both. Um, yeah, as far as cigars, bud, I, most pro shops that I know still sell them. So it's still – I. You can still the last time I played golf, I wore shoes. Not yeah, you can wear tennis shoes. shoes. Absolutely. I just wore my regular ass walking shoes. So there are people that wear Crocs to play golf in. So right, I, I'm you know, sure that's a, very, that's a very that's a very Florida thing. And and you know what? They they sell Crocs with soft spikes on the bottom of them. So let me tell you that I've seen a person. So let me just tell you how weird the golf industry has gotten with that. <laughs> There's nothing. As long as you're not trying to play Augusta, you know. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not gonna have someone on a course. national with Crocs on. <laughs> if you're if you're playing your local golf course just to have fun, yeah, you're a douchebag, and everybody else on the course will think you're a d bag. If you show up with five with five hundred dollars worth of equipment, clubs, <laughs> shoes, jackets, hats, you know. I mean, you know, they're going to look at you like you're just a walking advertisement for Nike or Titleist or whoever, Callaway. You know, Correct. if you drop $250 on a set of Callaways and another $60 on, on, a, on a set of Callaway balls and you got the Callaway pants and hat and shirt and, and shoes, you're just, you're just another poser. You know, you're not out there to actually play golf. You're there to be seen, see and be seen. Mm-hmm. And if That's you really have a good time playing golf, Go to go to somebody's garage. Go to a garage sale. Shout out to local garage sales. You can pick up a set of clubs. I guarantee you won't spend sixty bucks. Nope. You'll get everything you need. You'll, you'll get a bag. You get all your irons, your drivers, your woods, your wedges, and a putter. Guarantee you won't spend more than sixty bucks. Yeah. Nope. Because somebody's gonna somebody's gonna want to just maybe maybe a hundred dollars. At well, most $100. And then, too, but, too, at, at, a, at, a yard, at a yard sale, you can negotiate. Mm-hmm. Like, say you pull up, they have, let's say they they have 75. You go, you know what? I'll offer you 50. They'll probably take it yep. just to get rid of them, get them off their, you know, get them off their hands. Yep. And so then you maybe, can, yep. And maybe you spend a little bit more on one one club that you really like. Well, here's here's the question I have to throw to you guys. What club do you think is the most important in the golf bag? Huh. Five iron. I was gonna say that five iron. It's no, my I favorite mean, club. You can you can say that, I'm but I think, I'll tell you who what my opinion is. Who I think the most important club in your golf bag is is your putter because you use it on every hole. Ah, <laughs> that's a club you use on most of unless you chip in. Not nah, there have you know I, we've all done that before. Yes. But I mean, as far as who, the most important club and that, you know, be the funny thing is I was reading an article a few years ago. Mm-hmm. People spend 800 to a thousand dollars on a driver, but will only spend an average of 80 yes. to a hundred dollars on a putter. Mm. Tell me what's wrong with that equation. You don't use your right. driver to be whole. No. Well, you, well, so yeah. most holes you do the par threes you wouldn't unless they are extremely long par three a very very long par three yeah extremely long but par threes. on on those short par threes i do use my five iron most of the time i i like the five iron because i can really like anything 160 to 180 i just let it crank you know i ain't gotta check it up well that's what you're, you're hoping to get some spin on it yeah spin the yeah ball. but i ain't gotta but i ain't gotta like modify my grip or choke up on it i can just you know Get back behind it and let it rip. And that's what I and love I, about. This. And I never knew, Bud, you were left-handed either. You said I was oh, right-handed. Yeah. So I, never knew, I never knew. Oh, you're left-handed too, Lewis. I didn't know that either. Okay. Okay. I, my roommate, well, my okay. roommate's left-handed too. So yeah. So I write right-handed. I use my right hand for to write. Everything but else. I, I, I could do. I, I, I play hockey left-handed. I golf left-handed. 
I bat yeah. left-handed. I even sweep left-handed. Like, with a broom, I sweep. I mop left-handed. Um, That's your dominant hand outside of writing. There you go. Right. I, 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 I can shoot either hand. I can shoot with either hand. But when it, and, and rifles, I shoot right-handed because it's just how I grew, grew up. Um, but I can I can shoot a pistol either hand, uh, and I'm fairly confident with both hands. But um, yeah, I just fell in love with uh, with batting left-handed. Like it just felt so natural and so so more so much more comfortable. When I try to bat right-handed, I just feel like I'm I'm not. I don't I don't feel good from the right from the right side. I always I always batted left-handed, and I just feel like I'm I'm better from from the left side, and that just and then. Like I've tried to play hockey right-handed, and I can't. I just it just does not feel comfortable. It just doesn't feel. It feels unnatural. We can we can roll into into batting left-handed or right-handed. If you want to talk, we can talk about that. Um, obviously, there's been some big free agent pickups now since the league is yeah. active. What is your guys' take on Freddie Freeman being a Dodger? I thought he was going to head. It's going to go up the East Coast and go go to New York. You know, there was rumored last night from another show was uh, participating in saying that they were, he was going to go to the Dodgers, and behold, they were right. Okay, I'm wrong. Sue me. <laughs> or, or, Chris, or, you know, or Chris Bryant going to the Rockies. I didn't think the Rockies were spending money. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't think Colorado was spending money. Yeah. It's another disaster for that, for the for MLB. Uh, it could be worse. Than, it could be the Orioles. Ugh. I I was thinking I was thinking about the the Freddie Freeman to the uh, yeah. the Dodgers just the rich keep getting richer. They do. Mm-hmm. I mean, um, Chris Bryant to the Rockies. I mean, the Rockies are a charity case at best. So you can say that again. They're a charity case at best. I know. Do they have, do they even have any fans? I don't know. Yeah, I know. I know. I, I yeah. watched a urinating, urinating tree episode about them and how bad ownership is in Colorado. I mean, I did. If you speaking of his video, if you watch the latest episode about horrible owners, Hugh Coverhouse yeah. and the Buccaneers, he's exactly one hundred percent right. Everything about Hugh Coverhouse, he hit it on the head. That's why the Bucks were so bad in the beginning of their franchise because he was so cheap and right. yeah he and he you know so yeah he not the greatest man <laughs> I, I've seen him, but it was only like i saw it on his channel and i was only like 20 minutes long so i didn't have a chance to watch it yet yeah it's it, if, if you get a chance to watch go watch it i mean if you're into that i know i know he did the one about the lady that owned the cincinnati reds for a little while and mm -hmm. how bad of a owner she was too um yeah you know, and stuff like that. Well, speaking of that, uh, Lewis, what do you think about the Yankees training Gary Sanchez to the Twins for Josh Donaldson? Donaldson's uh, a Yankee. What do you feel about that? Uh, San uh, I don't know. I mean, well, Sanchez has lost a bit of a step in recent years. Maybe the time was due for him to go. But, he, he, I mean, he was a decent player, though. But Donaldson, you know, he is, he's no sauce either, so – I think uh, overall, the end that maybe the trade was was worth it. I like that, and I'm not a Yankee like fan. Yeah. Mm. Has have, have you guys heard? Have, has Carlos Correa resigned with the or uh, Astros, or is he still he's a free? Still, agent? He's still a free agent. Still a free agent. Okay. I don't think there's been any other big big deals that have been done that I've seen. I mean, the Freddie Freeman one was the last one that I saw Yeah, that was major. That made him, you know, yeah, yeah. major impact on the rest of the league. Um, I haven't seen anything, anything interesting. Okay. Not since, not since the, uh, the deal to, for Freddie Freeman, okay. uh, the Tigers signed, uh, signed a pitcher from the, uh, from the A's earlier. Yes, he did. Forget, forget his name. Um, he's a reliever. Yeah. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Gotta hurry up. Oh. Uh, Andrew Chafin. Well, I, I, the Tigers, the Tigers are a young team too, so mm -hmm. that's going to be one of those things you'll have to. I mean, I know, and I, I think, but a, a while back, you 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 were talking to me about how you were tired of hearing the word rebuild. You know, yeah, it's a dirty, dirty word, dirty word. Yeah, when's the rebuild going to be over? Um, but the funny thing is with the Tigers. And the Red Wings, especially their owner. Well, Stevie Eiserman you know, obviously does his magic. He will have that franchise back soon. I'm going to bet you in the next year or two, it'll be, he'll, they'll be back. The Red Wings will be back to where they were. Yeah. It feels like it. I just need a better coach. Yeah. I think we talked about that, but a couple weeks ago on Sunday, you were talking to me about how, it was time for the Red Wings to get a new head coach there. Um, but um, that's basically, I mean, that's, I mean, the season starts, what, uh, April 7th? Is April that right? 7th. Yeah. That's that's right. About a week or two away, and then we can start looking yeah. at the at the scoreboard every night. and Because, right. again, yeah. we can't really go through and say, oh, well, this team's got a three-game lead. Um Big deal. Yeah, the division when it's April or May, because it doesn't matter. It won't matter until ju until July, August, and September. Mm -hmm. That's when the games mean something. At that right. even, even in a three game lead in August isn't that much. No, 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 no. I mean, I'm talking, but you know, if you can get you can get out to a five six game lead in August, and you can hold it. I mean, in September, yeah. the the dog days of summer. You know, the August and September, if you can hold it through August and September, you got a good shot at being in the, obviously, the high is the postseason to win a World Series. Obviously, that's the ultimate goal. Um, do you guys want to talk about college basketball since March Madness started yes. today? Uh, we can talk about that. Yeah. Gonna... UConn's about to lose. Yeah. UConn's about to lose? Is that what you said? Is that... Yeah. Who are, are they playing? Are... New Mexico playing? State. New Mexico. Are you a UConn fan? Yes. I didn't know UConn was your team. Well, I've seen Hall, but UConn, you know, is also my team. I thought Rutgers was your team. Yeah, Rutgers, of course. Uh, well, they had a great game last night, though. But they lost in double overtime. Yeah. The, yeah, they did. yeah. I fell asleep watching that game. Yeah. Shoot it. Ah, missed it completely hmm. by a mile. Yeah, I see that. Um, oh, there you are. Who else won? Who else was one of the upsets that's already happened today already? Well, uh, Richmond was an upset. Richmond, that was the one I saw. Richmond, Richmond. knocked out Iowa. Knocked out right. Iowa. Yep. God watch those twelve five seeds. I mean, there's they're very. It's very underrated because the 12 seed comes from a, from a school that nobody really knows about, and they just think, "Well, we can beat the pants off." And they're they're no, you know, they're a slouch team, not necessarily. Right, right. Um, let me go ahead and uh, so these are some of the games from earlier. Whoops, I went up too far. Um, games from earlier that have either already are finals or are. Close to being finals. Um, so Michigan beat Colorado State 75 63. Yeah. Providence beat Sandy, uh, excuse me, South Dakota State uh, earlier today. I was going to say San Diego, well, that San Diego. That's South Dakota. Um, Memphis beat Boise State 64 right. 53. Baylor beat Norfolk State 85 49. Tennessee beat Longwood 88 yeah. 56. Richmond beat uh, Iowa 6763. Um right. Gonzaga beat Georgia State 9372. Um you made North, though. Yeah, North Carolina beat Marquette 9563. Yeah. The games that are currently going on, New Mexico State's up 6863 with six seconds left. Um 
Kentucky's up 68-62 over St. Peter's with 349 left in the sec in the second half. Um, St. Mary's is blowing out Indiana 65-33 in the second half. Wow, that's a big blowout. That's uh, San Diego State is up on Creighton 54-48. And then, of course, the night games are as follows. Arkansas plays Vermont. San Francisco plays Murray State. Akron plays UCLA. And Texas Southern plays Kansas later mm -hmm. tonight. So those are the four games that are left on the docket. Um, but that is that. Yeah. Um, I mean, do you guys do you do you have a guys do you guys have a prediction of who you think is gonna win it all? Anybody got a Gonzaga. you said Gonzaga? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Kansas. So Gonzaga, is that is that is that the unanimous? I said, pick? I said Gonzaga. <laughs> Jayhawks. Kansas. Kansas. Okay. Kansas. Uh -huh. All right. I just like Kansas. You know what? I, 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 I hate I hate to say this, and I'm going to go out on a huge limb. Huge limb, and I hate this team. Hate them with a passion. I'm going to go with the Tennessee Volunteers. I think they're the best team right now. I'm going to go on a huge limb and take the team that I just cannot stand. You don't God. like him, but you're gonna take him anyway. I'm okay. Gonna him. I'm gonna take him. I'm gonna I'm take sure him. This madness. <laughs> well, with any luck, I'll be out Saturday. So. Yeah, I know. Maybe I'll get lucky. Yeah, because they're right. playing Michigan. <laughs> That's the next opponent. Michigan's yeah. at Tennessee. <laughs> That's the next. Opponent. That's the next opponent for Tennessee. So there you go. Mm. Uh oh. Um. Let's see. What is uh, – I wanted to look at – has the women's tournament started yet or they – Women's tournament has started, yes. Okay. Yeah, they started last night, didn't they? Yes. I thought it started the weekend. I thought it started Saturday like it did in previous years, but it's already started. Let me see. Let me see. Because USF is in that – is in that – I was curious. USF plays Miami. Yes. To start their um to start it off. So I was curious when that game was. Oh yeah, here we go right here. That you got some games already that have all oh no, that's division, that's men's basketball. Okay. Let's see here. So here is the ladies bracket. So they play the eighteenth. That's Saturday. Okay. No, that's tomorrow. At yeah. eleven thirty AM. Maybe I can listen to the game on um iHeart Radio and Bulls Unlimited. I'm sure that game will be on there. Oh. But South Florida is the number nine seed in the Greensboro division. I don't, I mean, it would be great to see them win a national championship. I don't see that happening. But, you know, what the hell you could throw there, throw it out there. Who are the, who is the number one? Oh, Stanford. Stanford's the number one. Stanford, South Carolina. Yeah. Who are the number one seeds? Who else? Oh, there's, is there only? Oh, there's only two. No, I think. Oh, there's. Oh, I didn't go down far enough. Louisville and NC State. Those are the. Okay, so those are the four one seeds in women's college basketball. Okay, UConn's a two seed. Okay, I was just curious. I wanted to see when the USF started, so I'll be paying attention right. tomorrow morning when the the Bulls tip it off in the uh, women's. Well, that's early though. Huh. That's early. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's early. 11.30 a.m. Wow. And the friggin' Michigan played at 12.15 this afternoon. Super annoying. Yeah. If they get those games started early, they got to get them all in. <laughs> they got to get them all in. Imagine if you live on the West Coast or Hawaii, that'd be really early. Ooh, Jesus. Right. You're talking 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. in Hawaii mm -hmm. for, for a 12 mm -hmm. o'clock tip? Oh, Breakfast in Breakfast and basketball. Yeah, break, yeah, here you go. Breakfast and basketball. Go. Rebound. <laughs> Kentucky and St. Peter close. It's 68. Ken, Kentucky, 68. St. Pete, 66. 66. Yeah, they are. Are you close. watching the game, too? Okay. Yeah, those are close. Until now. And St. Peter is just taking the lead. Yeah! That'll be a shocker if they beat Kentucky. <laughs> I, yeah. I had Kentucky going down in first round. 
You did. I did. Is there something that you that we that you know that we don't know? Kentucky. It's Kentucky. They were going to lose in the first round. Okay. <laughs> I had to, I had to lose in the first round. In the my case, it's Kentucky. It's Kentucky. <laughs> it's Kentucky. I just, it's I just Kentucky. had a feeling that. Now watch, they'll come back and they'll win this game by fifteen. But I was going to ask you guys what you thought about. Steph Curry being out now into the playoffs with a spring blow, blow. But, yeah. but I really don't think that they're gonna. They were gonna. They weren't gonna catch the Suns. No. No, they're not. Let me go through the uh, the power rankings real quick. Is 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 Phoenix number one? I mean, I haven't looked at these yet. Phoenix Phoenix number one. One, oh, yes. Phoenix number one. Oh yeah. Yeah. And the Suns are going to be a, the Suns are going to be a tough out. Yeah, they have. This is ESPN's power rankings. They have Phoenix at one, Miami at two, uh, the Grizz, Memphis Grizzlies at three. They have Golden State at four, Milwaukee at five, Philadelphia at six, Boston at seven, Dallas at eight, the Jazz at nine, the Bulls at ten, the Nuggets at eleven, the Nets at twelve. Cleveland at 13, Toronto at 14, Minnesota at 15, the Clippers at 16, the Hawks at 17, the Hornets at 18, the Lakers at 19, the Pelicans at 20, the Wizards at 21, the Knicks at 22, the Spurs at 23, the Trailblazers at 24, the Kings at 25, the Pacers at 26, the Pistons at 27, OKC at 28, the Magic at 29, and Houston rounds out the 30. Wow, there's somebody below the magic. I'm shocked. That's shocking. Wow. That's shocking because they're horrible. <laughs> Orlando is not a good. Orlando no. is not a good basketball team by any means of the imagination. They're not. They're not a. They're not good at all. Um, I'm gonna flip it over to the. Uh huh. To ice. Any any update on the scores? It's still the same, or Kentucky really the same. Kentucky just took back the lead. It's coming down Kentucky. to the bottom right now. It's out of three. Yeah. Yeah. What, what, ch- what channel is that on? What channel is it on? Guys? Yeah. CBS. Main CBS. Yes. CBS. Yeah. Yeah. Wherever it is in your area, I don't know, but no, nah, CBS in my area is ten ten. That's my 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 area. Ten ten. Well, it's it's channel ten, but that's the. Uh, Okay. High definition channel. Okay. Kentucky can hold for one oh, shot. Man. Kentucky for oh, the last time. Look at that. The old off the backboard and rolling right. it in there. 71 71. Here we go. 18 seconds left. See me for a second. I would have taken time out. With a win, we got overtime. All right. Nothing wrong with a little overtime basketball. Wow. He stumbled. He stumbled. And he missed it. An air ball. Wow. Did you think he would see this kind of a game with a second seed and a 15 seed? I didn't think so. Well, the, the funny thing about the tournament is there's so much parity now. And that's mm-hmm. what makes it so good. That's what makes mm-hmm. this tournament so good. Right. Is the, is the parity around college basketball, you know. It's not just one dominating team or five dominating teams. It's right. there's so much so many good players on teams mm-hmm. that you've never even heard of. <laughs> that are, that are, that are yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right. So we have hockey. The Rangers and Islanders are tied at one in the third period. Toronto is up three to one over Carolina. The Stars in Montreal are tied at two. Nashville's up four to three over Phil uh, over the Flyers. Quadru played his one thousandth game as a Flyer. Um, the Capitals are up five to two over the Blue Jackets. The Penguins are up one nothing over St. Louis. Edmonton is up one nothing over Buffalo. And I think the Red Wings are playing later tonight. Yeah, they play uh, Vancouver. The Canucks. Okay. They play the Canucks a little bit later on. The Canucks. 
I know the Panthers made a big trade today with the Montreal Canadiens, acquiring Ben Chalot, that's the defenseman. That'll help booster their defense. So the power rankings, according to NHL.com, is the Avalanche at one, Carolina at two, Florida at three, Tampa Bay at four, Calgary at five, the Rangers at six, um, Pittsburgh at seven, Toronto at eight, Boston at nine, St. Louis at 10, Washington at 11, Nashville at 12, Minnesota at 13, Kings at 14, Edmonton at 15, Dallas at 16, and that's the top 16 teams. Dropping out, obviously, would be the Golden Knights, who I think are on the verge of missing the playoffs. They don't get their shit together. Wow. Well, they haven't missed the playoffs in their franchise history, have they? That is correct. They have never missed the postseason. You are correct. That's right. It's the postseason. Oh, so it's only a five. Okay, so it's only a five minute overtime. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Is that, is that is that all? Is that even during the regular season too? Yes. Yeah. Five minute yeah. overtime. Okay. Yeah. I've only been to two basketball games, and neither one of them reached the overtime mark. USF men's team got beat by Memphis a few years ago, and then I the latest game. USF women, I think they beat them by like 40 points. So there was no overtime to be served. Ooh, there's a, a foul? Yeah, yeah. Oh, did they call it over the back? I was going to say, that looked like a steal to me more than a foul. Oh, come on, ref. Let them play. Yeah. Let them play, ref. Let them play. Come on. Yeah, UConn did get beat. 70 to 63. Mm -hmm. Wow. He's eight for 10 from the foul line. 69% uh, foul, 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 foul shot. Free, Free throw shooter. Gotta love the pink shoes. Gotta love the pink shoes in the mm -hmm. right. Uh huh. Ooh, there's a brick off the front of the. Yeah, of the it's, a brick one. it's a brick. Doing a lot of those shots. It's five in college, isn't it? Yes. That's what I thought. He missed both. Oh, that one rimmed out. Oh, oh that's my lord! He missed that's both. Right, man. Now, this is where St. Peter's got to take advantage of that. Mm -hmm. They got to take advantage of that. Got to get a mm -hmm. bucket here or a three. One of the now, two. But they have to use the whole clock and make it a good shot. That was contested. Ah. That was not a good shot. That was not a good shot. There's a steal. That's a that's a good steal. Oh, there's a steal back. Oh, oh. Get the, got the point. See, I here we go. What is it with the shot clock's what 25 seconds? Yeah. 20, okay. Yeah. yeah, I would I would take I take the whole 25 seconds. Make them work. Foul. Offensive foul, or that? That? foul. Kind of looked like you could have gone either way. Man, to me that's just basketball. Yeah. Well, that's what I said. I mean, you're in the you're you're in the big dance now. I mean, let them play, man. Well, I mean, unless it's a hard foul, don't call the don't call ticky tack shit. Yeah, don't call ticky tack. Looks like that was yeah. yeah, that was a foul on Kentucky. They did call that on Kentucky. They called that a yep. defensive foul. To me, that was just basketball. Let them play. See, I think they call too much. They should just let they should let them more. They should let more stuff go. They yeah, just play on. He missed the free throws. He missed it. Wow. 0 for 3 in the last three free throws. Oh, Jesus. Gonna, those man. points are down the stretch. Yep. Huge. Wow, St. Mary's is up by 33 points. They are killing Indiana. Holy shit. Over there. Wow. They are killing Indiana. Four-point game. Get the three ball. Get the three ball. 
I was gonna say that's a foul. Yeah. I gotta make the free throw, make those free throws. Don't so, miss. All right. Mm-hmm. Can you tell me? Eleven, uh, eleven's got to elevate on that though. Can you tell me what this up, is? Go off with him. Tell me what this is that I'm holding in my hand. A hockey puck? No, it's not it's a puck. Like a golf ball? Not a golf ball. It's a ball. ball. Nope. This is a lacrosse ball. <laughs> okay. I oh, found this when I went to the rugby game. It was in the field. I picked it up, and I have kept it. It's been kind of like a good luck charm. But, yeah, I didn't know what it was either. And so I brought it on. I'm like, what the hell? And it bounces. Like, it bounces like a bouncy ball. And I'm like, what the hell is this thing? I looked it up. It's a, it's a lacrosse ball. <laughs> it's a cool. lacrosse ball. So I don't, I don't own a lacrosse net, but I own a ball. Another no. missed free throw. Oh, Jesus. Throw. Another That's missed brutal. free throw. You're not going to win that way. Nope. nope. You can call a call timeout. Yep. Somebody Duck. did. Look, like they, they had him trapped in Kentucky Duck timeout. Oh. Full court pressing. Yep. They caught a foul on that. Wow. I didn't That's... see I didn't see where he got fouled at. Right. Wow, I didn't, I didn't see, I didn't see where that fell. I didn't see it all either. But he bricked them both. No harm, no foul. Uh, St. Peter's only all they got to do is make a three. They thought the game tied, or get a yep. two and a foul. Get a two and a foul. Yeah, get a two and a foul. Yeah, two and a foul. There's a three. Oh, he hit it. The three. Yeah, yeah. Tie game. He hit the three. <laughs> Man, when it was five, when it was five, when it was a five-point game or a four-point game, there, it felt like Kentucky was getting ready to roll. Can somebody tell me where St. Peter's is at? Where their school is located? It's I don't know. It's from my area. Are they okay? Are they Jersey. Yes. Oh, cool. Now. Nine seconds. Seven seconds. Six seconds. Got to get the shot oh, off. You. Hmm. He missed. Oh no! Come on, ref. Let them play. Come on. Stop calling the ticky tack stuff. I guess I'm all ahead of you. Yeah, you are. I think you are, Lou. Yeah. You we got a yeah. little bit of a delay. <laughs> We're delayed a little bit. Yeah. We're delayed a little bit. How 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 many students at St. at St. Peter? It's a small school. What are I mean? Are they are they're they're NCAA? Are they? Yes. Okay. So they're 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 within the. They have to be pretty. Pretty big, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah, decent 2, size. What was that? You said twenty six hundred. Mm-hmm. Okay. Not bad. Yeah. Uh, let's see. So they have a thirty five hundred students enrolled. Yes. Nice. Okay. Okay. That's not bad. That's not bad. Oh, it's a huge, huge upset, man. Well, it's not over yet. No, no. Oh, I was gonna say, come on, ref. You're not gonna call that. Oh, they did call that one. Okay, I was gonna say they did call that one. That one. That's one where you can't let. That's not. That's not a yeah, display. That one you can't. Yeah, that, was, yeah, that one. That one you can't let it slide. Uh, it's a hip on hip, man. That's that's gonna get the that's gonna yeah. the blocking foul. Now you shoot two, or is it? Yeah, now they'll shoot two. See, he needs to I make both. Of these. He needs to yeah. Make he needs to make the front the front side at least. There's one. Now, do you miss the second one on purpose and try to for the rebound? Well, you still got minute forty five to go. That's um, a good. That's- it's a good way to look at it. That's a good way to look at it. So if you, if, but if you can turn it, you can turn it into a, a three-point possession. If you can get the, you got both of them. So now you just play defense, man. This has been a hell of a ball game, though. Never mind. Huh. Yeah. San Diego's going to put uh, 
Creighton away. Good. The 30 point game. Who the hell was that pass to? 34. 34 oh was my. flashy inside. Who and he the didn't. hell was that pass to? That was he was, trying, he was trying, to find, trying to find 34 down low, and uh, he just couldn't get open. I was going to say that that was horrible. That was a horrible. That was almost the, that was he almost gave that one away. Part three. There's the two. Okay. There you go. Up by three with less than a minute to play. Ball game. One of the biggest upsets we ever had. Yeah, uh, Kyle Party just called a timeout. I remember. I remember when he coached UMass. <laughs> mm. I remember when he coached the UMass Minutemen. <laughs> That's a fun. Which which do you guys remember which coach he got into it in a press conference with? He somebody uh, from the Temple or somebody he got into a yeah. verbal argument with somebody at a at, during a press conference. If I don't if I can remember correctly. I don't remember which coach it was. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I can look that up real quick. <clears throat> Oh my God! What a game! Yeah. Yeah. Party. That's the name I'm looking up. Let's see. It was with John Cheney. Mm. He got into it with John oh. Cheney. This is when he was. Oh, this is when Cal Party was coaching UMass. It wasn't. It wasn't any reason. So that must have been like twenty years ago now. Yeah. It's yeah. It was. It I was when Cal Party was young. I remember watching mm. it on the. Uh, so the winner of this game will play the winner of Murray State San Francisco, which goes off later tonight. Tips off yeah, in about what, 20, 25, 20 minutes, twenty five minutes. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yes. Sixteen ties, thirteen lead changes. Wow. Okay. That's 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 a good game. <laughs> that's a good Great. game right there. What we did not expect. Well, those no. nine three pointers. I don't think Kentucky. I think Kentucky got more than they bargained for. I think Kentucky got more than they bargained for. Yes. Good block shot. Good block shot. That's 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 that should be St. Pete's ball. Yeah, I, I think that should go. Yeah, I think that should go to St. Peter's. It looked to me like it went off uh, the Kentucky player's arm. Because it was the block shot, right? There's the block. Okay. Right. Yeah, I think it went off, of his, went off his right arm. 12. It went off a, I saw it go off the 12. It should be St. Pete's ball. Yeah, I went right. off his back. I went off of his there. back. Should be St. Pete's ball. But I, if, if I'm St. Pete, either way, either way I look at it, Regardless of who goes, yeah, I think I think it should go. I think it should go. Um, should go to Saint Pete. Yeah, yeah, because it goes off his arm right there. Hmm. Watch, I'm sorry. I'm thinking, thinking myself. Who called a timeout? They don't have any timeouts in college basketball, like. No one did their own official review. Yeah. St. Pete's got three timeouts left, and Kentucky's got two. Two? Now, they, they get what? They get so many 30 seconds and, and so many full timeouts? I think that this college basketball has a 20-second timeout. Something like that. I know something along those lines. I know ball does. I don't think yeah. college ball does. No. no. Okay. I'm going to say that one off number 12. I think that one off number 12. This is a good angle. I can't wait to see this angle. Now, 31 may be in the way. Randy, get the hell out of the way. Randy, get out of the way. Let's see. That went off of his finger. Yep. That's 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 St. Pete's ball. That's right there. Ball, man. 
Yeah, right there should show. Yeah. Right there should show. Should Connor show. Love tournament basketball. Is there anything better? I, I I have to say, it did did the champ did the ball change to a lighter orange? A did little it, bit. I think the, the NBA, NBA ball a darker ball. Yeah, so the NBA ball is a darker ball, right? They don't yeah. they don't use that bright orange balls like they do in college. I like the bright I like the bright orange ball. It, it, it picks up better I on think, the camera. I think brighter the better. I mean, I think right, right, right there, right there, right there, right there. That's St. Pete's ball. Yeah, no, that's no doubt. There, that's no doubt. You can't tell me that they can say that 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 went off of a of a St. Pierre's player. You can't tell yeah. me that. So, how do you feel about this, Brad, as, a, as an SEC guy? Well, I mean, I, I obviously it would be outstanding to see the SEC win a basketball championship too, but I picked Tennessee to win it all, so there you go. Right. Uh, right. But um, if Kentucky, I mean, Kentucky losing, that's a big blow to the SEC because <laughs> that's one of the blue bloods of yeah. our – of yeah. our, uh, yeah, our about, I mean, brackets will be destroyed. Oh yeah, oh, how many? There are probably people right now going, "Come on, Kentucky win! My bracket's gonna get blown up." Well, hopefully, hopefully, no, no one picked um, picked Indiana since they lost by uh, twenty nine points. Jesus, that was a yeah. beat down. That's an ass. That's an ass. Twenty nine lost to St. Mary's. Jeez. I didn't. I didn't even. I didn't. I didn't fill out a bracket this year because I just didn't have time. Got too busy and didn't, so we, didn't think about it. We could have. We could have filled it out, but last Sunday night, if you wanted to, and kind of went through it. I didn't think about. It. Well, I hate. I hate filling out before the. Uh, before the, the playing the games. Right. Right. Yeah, especially before selection. But they hit the front. They front hit the front side. They're up by four. The biggest shot of the game. This will put them up five. Yup. There it is. 31 Eight, seconds right. left. They're up by five points. Yeah, this is what makes this is what makes this tournament so cool. Yeah. I think we oh, should. damn. You got the three. Get the three. That now you got to make your free throw. Yep. That's a big three pointer right there. Huge. That was a big three. Huge. Well, he left them wide open. Look at this. Look, he, he gave him time to shoot. Yeah. He gave him too much space. That's what yeah. they're going at him for. Like, hey, you got to step up and wow. take his space away from him. You got to hit your three throws. Yeah. Yeah, you have to now because they're only down two. Yep. yep. You have to hit the front side to at least. And actually, you know, speaking of Kentucky, as far as uh, their football team, they're a pretty good football team, too. They've the gotten better. They've, they've gotten much up. better than Mark Stoops. They've come up the last few years. They beat the Gators this year. They beat the Gators this year. But, I right. mean, yeah, they, um, yeah they're, they're, they're a decent football team. And like you said, under Stoops, one of the Stoop brothers. Mark. So, yeah. yeah, Mark Stoops. Do you you guys see them? You guys see them playing full court here, keeping them away. Foul, right? You can foul them. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, foul right away. Save as much because time as you can. Yeah, because it because you can't let them because they can just, if you if you don't get that if you if you don't get the steal, you foul right away because they can right. run the clock out because the shot clock's off now. Yeah, that's right. There's the one. You have to hit the front one. The biggest shot of the night. 20 seconds left. Pretty decent. Oh, right we got it. Got the first one. Well, I mean, can can you say that if he hits both, that it's over? No. Too much time. No. Kentucky still has a full timeout left. And then, and then, only, and then, only, and then only be down by four, right? At that point? Yeah, yeah. And you can you can get a quick two and a timeout and another quick two to tie the game up. Oh, yep. now if you miss this shot, we got a long road to go. Oh no! Oh, he missed the three, and that should just about do it. 
I I, I think that uh, that's going to do it. And Seven seconds be. left with up by four. Yeah, and you just need one. You need one of two. And it's Saint over. Peter's has the ball. He missed the uh, three. The free throw. They'll take it though. They get the free throws. See, I think they should have gone for. You take that. You take that on that with twenty seconds. You take that hard to the hole. Oh, oh, that poor little boy. That poor little boy's crying. <laughs> yeah, that poor little guy's crying. It's the like agony. Creighton's only down by two. Wow. I said Creighton's come. Creighton's only down by two points with thirty-two yeah, seconds. They made a, they made yeah, they're trying to They're pulling close. There's the free throw. Now they're That's up by one. five. You have a miracle, but I don't think you're going to get it. Mueller? No. We have our big up to the tournament. Cool. Good for them. St. Peter's. Way to go. Missed it. Way to go, St. Peter's. Way to go. That's wow. a big upset. Way to go. And they're proud of Peacock. Oops, I can't say that. They are peacocks, though. That's what they're. That's their. Yeah, but that's, yeah, that's NBC. We can't say that. Ah. Oh well, NBC's all but almost gone. Well, wow. wow. they're peacocks, so I guess we stole from them. Oh. <laughs> so okay, a, nice, a, folks. A school that has twenty six thousand stu- or twenty six hundred students. Yeah. Just beat a school that probably has three or twenty six thousand. Twenty six million. Twenty six times the size of their student base. Wow, what a game. Square one from my hometown. And there goes everyone's bracket. (laughs) Because I'll bet you a lot of people had Kentucky winning tonight. There goes a bunch of people's brackets just like that. Yeah. Just like that, the bracket is busted. Yeah. Uh, 95% of all of us. The bracket is busted. Busted bracket. Where's Creighton? And you just all lost out a million bucks. I think they're on True TV. It's tied. Tied with okay. 11 seconds left. Finally found it. San Diego State. They are tied. So now St. Peter's will play the winner of Murray State, San Francisco later on. That's a 7 10 game. That should be good. 7 10 basketball game. Getting ready to get started. I don't know. I'm going to watch the end of this one if we go back that way. And there it goes the bracket. Yep, bracket, brackets are busting all over the world tonight. Brackets are busting all over the world tonight. Yeah. No, you know what? That's what makes this tournament so cool because yeah. you got teams like that that no one expects to do anything. Yeah. By the way, uh, I I in Jersey City, New Jersey, so, uh, my hometown. Yeah. Jersey City, Jersey. Yeah. Square one for Jersey. Good for them. Right. Well, I, I thought Kentucky, I I I I just had a feeling Kentucky was gonna lose. Didn't care who they play. I don't know how many think so though. Just a feeling. You know, every year there's either a three or a two. Yeah. Usually, usually a couple fours go down. One three goes down, and every couple years a two. Ian Rappaport and Tom Pelissero with breaking news. Massive move here. Devontae Adams to the Raiders. More implications for Sorry about that. Not meaning for that. Oh, no, that's okay. Um, We got caught up in the basketball, so. No, that's okay. He got a a five-year, $145 million contract. The picks being sent to Green Bay are the number 22 and number 53 overall picks in this year's draft. So they got a first and second round pick. Did uh, uh did Packers did. did Green Bay retain any salary? Let's see. The deal quietly has been works in for days, finalizing details. Um frustrations. It does not say, but it does not say. Um okay. all they said is that he continued to um fight contract negotiations with Green Bay, obviously. You heard earlier in the week he was not playing under the tag. He came right. out and said he wasn't going to play under the tag. So he obviously 
now is back. I guess it said that him and Derek Carr went to college together. I did not know that. I didn't realize so I did that either. Where did they go to school at? I'm not really sure where Devontae Adams went to college. It's so revisory. I don't remember where Derek Carr went to school at either. Derek Carr go to San Diego State? I said, I'm not sure where, where he went. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see here. I'm, I'm curious about that myself. California State University, Fresno. Cal State, okay. Cal State, yep. So I guess that's where Derek Carr went to. Does it count? Derek Carr. No, but a foul. Are you watching the end of Creighton? Um... Yeah. Yeah, that is true. Yep, they did go to college together. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Baylor, easy win. That's interesting. What else went on today in the National Football League? We went to Fresno, okay. So here's some here, – here's uh, – on NFL.com, they have three – Free agency, me. Frenzy, Rhett Lewis, Maurice Jones, Drew, Greg Rosenthal. Jesus. Great to have our Jesus. analytics expert. I hate those ads that go off on top of the screen. Um, here's three good fits and three kind of head scratchers for a free agency. One of the good fits is Mitchell Trubisky going to Pittsburgh. Um, the other one is cornerback oh, Trudavious Ward going to the 49ers. And the shot. Chandler Jones going to the oh, ring. God. Head scratchers are Carson Wentz going to Washington, Christian Kirk going to the Jaguars, and Shaq Mason to the Bucks. Really, that's a head scratcher. Interesting. They need an offensive lineman anyway. Hmm. I don't. I don't understand that. I don't understand that as a head scratcher. But okay. Okay. Is Creighton going to overtime? Yes. Yeah. They took what a terrible shot that was coming up the floor. They'd have been better off heaving a half court shot than whatever the hell that was. And did you guys hear Allen Robinson sign with the Rams, right? I did hear that. Yep. Allen Robinson okay. signed with the Rams. Yep. So here, yeah, I mean, Vaughn Miller going to the Bills. That's got it. That's it. Well, Funny thing, too, is, you know, who else went to the Bills? Former uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneer tight end O.J. Howard signed a one-year. Yeah, I'm here with Judy Batista and Jim Trotter. And one year. Jim, let start with you. We just see the news. One-year prove-it deal with the Buffalo Bills. So that's interesting. Teddy Bridgewater signed a one-year $6.5 million deal with the Dolphins. Did okay. not hear that. That's new. I did not hear that one being. No, I hadn't hear, heard that. I lost that. He was still in Denver. There you go. Uh, Raheem Mozart, the running back for the 49ers, also signed a one year deal with the uh, Dolphins. Mm. Um, James White re signed with the Patriots. Uh, we got Mac Wilson in exchange for Chase Winovich. I was uh, disappointed in that one. I would wish that Chase was still here. Still in yeah. Here. Mm-hmm. And then McCordy, Matthew Slater, Nick Folk all re signed. Brian Horror re signed. Okay. Yeah. Giants. The Giants brought back Joe Flacco. Okay. Okay. Hmm. Why? One year deal. Tevin Coleman's back with the Jets. Um, Tyler Coughlin signed a free agent deal. Um, Jordan Whitehead, the former Buccaneer, uh, corner of safety, signed a two year deal with the Jets. So he's hmm. up there. Um, Mark, uh, let's see, nothing really big for. The Ravens, Alex Kappa, the offensive guard, he's going to be help protecting Joe Burrow now. So that's Tom Brady. Um, Mari Cooper is in Cleveland. That's interesting. Dallas yeah, Cowboys. yeah, he got traded, but. Okay. That's interesting. Tuesday? So they, okay, so they, right now you have Dwayne Haskins and Mitchell Trubisky 
battling for the quarterback position in Pittsburgh. Interesting. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Uh, one of those guys is going to get it. Yeah. Miles Jack is on a two-year deal. He'll play linebacker for the Steelers. They've always been known for their defense anyway there. Yeah. That was a great play. Nothing big in Houston. No. Nothing big in Indianapolis. I think I have a funny feeling Baker Mayfield is going to end up there in Indianapolis for some offense. Yeah, yeah, that could be. Um, nothing. Jacksonville just signs everybody. <laughs> and they just signed everybody. Um, nothing really big for Tennessee. Obviously, Denver got Russell Wilson. Oh, Chad Henney re-signed a one, uh, one-year, $2 million deal to stay in Kansas City. Back cool. up. Um, yeah, I mean, so they got – the Raiders got Brandon Bold and Devontae Adams as their two big offensive. They brought in Chandler Jones and Max Crosby. Okay. That's interesting. Right on. Um, Chase Daniel signed, re-signed a free agent contract with the Los Angeles Chargers. Mike Williams signed a big deal earlier in the week. And Khalil Mack is yes. going to help that defense. And yeah. that defense is dangerous now, man. They got Joey Bosa. Yeah, Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack. That's um, crazy. Okay. On opposite yeah, sides. Yeah. That's very scary. <laughs> very scary. Michael Gallup re-signed a five-year, $57 million deal with the Cowboys. Tyrod Taylor is a giant. Two-year, $11 million yeah, deal. Yeah, what about that? Yep. Jason Kelsey re-signed with the Carson Wentz. I, I uh, wish him the best of luck in, in Washington. Yeah, you're going to need it. Yeah. Yeah. Paris didn't really do anything that well. Um. DJ Shark, the former Jaguar, signed a one-year, ten million dollar deal with the Lions. I don't yeah, I saw that. that. No help there. So Aaron Rodgers signs that big contract, and now has no Devontae Adams. Now it's going to be Alan Lazard, and probably they're probably going to resign Martel Martez Valdez Scantling, the former USF Bull. I can mm-hmm. imagine to bring him back. The Vikings extended Kirk Cousins. The NFC South, nothing really big other than, of course, Tom Brady coming back. But, I mean, Jack Mason coming over. They signed Russell Gage, the former Falcons wide receiver. Chris Godwin got a three-year deal. Aaron Stenny decided Ryan Jensen. They re-signed Carlton Davis. Holt McCoy re-signed a two-year contract with the Arizona Cardinals. Okay. Allen Robinson. The Rams, Drew came over there. That's basically it so far. I mean, I think obviously the biggest thing is the Devontae Adams. Yeah, yeah. The Adams trade earlier yeah. today, like right before we came on the air. Yeah, uh, yeah. That's crazy. But other than that, guys, I don't have anything else. If you guys want to kind of chill out and talk about the finals with the – with. Basketball week here. We got about seven more minutes to go. Right. I'm just watching this game. I was, I was listening to what you were saying about the free agency stuff. I thought I was going to dominate the headlines tonight. Mm-hmm. There was a lot of big moves in the NFL, but man, I this I love this time of year. Yes. Well, college basketball is fun to watch. I mean, it's this, it's this, fun is, this is when college basketball and this is when college basketball is at its most fun. Yes. Exactly. Correct. Yes. I, I think that's think one thing about year. I think that's what makes football so special. Is that your team only plays one game a week. And you only play six to 17 games. Hey, guys, uh, this just in. The Carolina Panthers are out of the Deshaun Watson. Uh, the official. Market. Market. Yeah, well, how come? Yeah. That's you know what Bucks fans better sure he doesn't go to the Saints. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah, yeah I kind of I have a feeling he's in. That's all I'm gonna say about Lance. I have a feeling he's headed to San to New Orleans. 
I, you know what? I would not be surprised if he doesn't go to Atlanta because that's his hometown. So I yeah. would not be surprised if he doesn't end up being a Falcon. Uh, my, uh, Matt Ryan for uh, Sean Watson yeah. straight up? Yeah. That that, that, yeah. Yep. I have a I funny feeling. I can see him in um, um, Cleveland. That, well, that's true. That could be – yeah, I because Baker Mayfield already wrote that letter that he was leaving. I think did tell me correct me if I'm wrong. He asked for a trade today, did he not? He yeah. did. And the yeah, Cleveland said no, we're not trading you. So what he would have to say outright, they probably outright release him then at that point. Yeah. Now, do they? Okay, so you had the game between St. Peter's and Kentucky. Not the same court that these guys are playing on, right? San Francisco no. State? Oh, okay. Maybe? I don't know. So the same, four, they, four games that are playing the same court in, this, in the first round. So did they, they just clear, did they just clear the fans out of the one and then bring new fans in? Or do you just sit there for all four games? I'm not uh, sure. I think it's an option. I, think, I mean, if it was me, I think I'd just sit there for all four games. Even if I didn't yeah. have a cheering section, I'd still go there just to sit and watch it. Right. 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 Whatever day you got your ticket, you know. That's the only thing that sucks about the tournament is that you won't know if your team makes the tournament until Sunday. Right. Yes. And you won't know what region your team's in. Until then. Yeah, until then, right? Until Selection Sunday. And so if you want to go watch your team play, It would be like basketball because uh, the women's tournament is in uh, um, Knoxville this weekend. And I feel like, you know, it's only about an hour for me. So it could be fun to go up there and, and watch a game. But Is it at Bridgestone? Knoxville. Oh, no, oh, Knoxville. Okay. Yeah. Here we go. What's the time left? Oh, Creighton just almost threw that away. And Knoxville's only about an hour for me, so it'd kind of be fun to go out there and watch a couple of a couple of basketball games. But you know, I don't know. I don't know how you. Sixty-eight, sixty-six. You guys want to do some closing stuff so we can get off here? All right. Yeah. It's left. Time to close it out. Call it a night. Yep. All right. Mm-hmm. In here, sports show Saturday, five to seven East Coast time. Number to call 512 543 4662. You know, we're going to be talking the college basketball tournament, of course. Uh, yeah, we'll uh, we'll do what's his name's return to the NFL. Excuse me, yeah, spring training, of course, takes place. Correct. Uh, we'll, we'll look at all the all the trades that have been going on in the, in the NBA, the NFL. Uh, maybe take a look at the um, NHL because the trade deadline is actually uh, Monday. So I think uh, if we can find anything on that, I'll bring it to you. And, of course, um, special WWE uh, with the passing of that famous wrestler. So I want to get the wrestling thoughts on that. You know, all, the, all you wrestling fans out there, you know, uh, call in because, you know, I might, you might want to share it. So um, all that and a whole lot more. Saturday, 5 to 7, East Coast time. And we're getting 512-543-4662. And guys. We lost him. We did. Um, we'll be on the Walker Report YouTube page uh, following the show. Uh, we want to thank everyone that joined in. We want to thank women, men and women of our armed forces and our first responders. Thank you. We love all of you guys. We will be back here next Thursday, guys, from 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Everyone out there, have a safe and happy St. Patrick's Day. Have a good weekend. We'll see you guys next week. Peace. Good night. Good night.